I don't know how to do this. <laughs> uh, it's been a long time, my friend. Uh, through the miracle of pre-recording plus me just not being here, <laughs> uh, I haven't recorded an episode of this show in like almost three weeks. Hell no, you haven't. And that doesn't make any sense in my brain because... Uh, we record one, sometimes two episodes of this show every week and have been doing so for like three years. Oh yeah. So for those of you that, uh, listened to me struggle through two solo Patreon episodes, that era uh, is over. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm excited to go and listen to those. Eh, they're okay. They're okay. They're fine. I thought you were going to bring along friends of the show. <laughs> Turns out we don't have any. Oh, I know. So- Guys, <laughs> turns out we got no friends. Nobody, and by lo- we I mean I. Nobody loves the sweary boys. Ryan, we have Yo. a show. We have a show coming up soon. Speaking of time passing and people loving us, come love us in L.A. October thirtieth, we're playing at the Satellite with uh, Ian Abramson and a-, a friend to be determined later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a secret. I'll yeah. tell you. We'll soon. tell you on Patreon this week. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're playing uh, our first West Coast live show. Yeah, buddy. October 30th. It's a Wednesday night at the Satellite in LA. You can buy tickets right now uh, at whatifpodcast.com slash LA. Yes. That's the letter L and the letter A. Get them. Get them. Do it. Don't delay. They're cheap. It's going to be a great show. We're going to be there. We're going to hang out with people afterwards if you guys want to hang out. Yup. Uh, yeah, so go do that. I'll sign your alien Sure. If bring you bring an alien, alien, Brian will sign it. I will it. sign it. Him, her, it, them. Them. Them, them, the are alien. Yeah. Uh, Los Angeles is going to be fun. LA or California or all surrounding areas. Yeah. Uh, you can travel from as far as you want to to get there. Hell yeah. Uh, Airplanes are things. Cars are things. Preach. Friends' couches are things. Preach. Uh, but really, though, come through. We'd really love to see you. And we're super psyched to be out on the West Coast. So uh, get your tickies. What if podcast.com slash LA. Ryan, you're a married dude. Real talk, true story, bud. I haven't seen you since the day you got married. Do you, I look you, you significantly look different? You look Aww. significantly better. Thanks, man. <laughs> you looked like hell before. You're looking great now. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel good. I it, was, feel... it was a great time. Yeah, man. You were there. I was. You got married in a, a haunted Hogwarts-ass mansion. It was sick. We took a little self-guided tour at the end of the night. I don't know if I told you about that. No, I didn't hear that no, story. Yeah, That's we, awesome. We went wandering around until we found the murder hallway and got scared and ran back downstairs. Did you really get scared? Yep. It was pretty... <laughs> it's, it's pretty weird up on the third floor. And it is. We were uh, we were walking around. We were doing a self guided art tour because there's so many weird paintings and shit. Many paintings, bro. And we were just opening up doors and going into rooms and stuff. And uh, our friend Peter, uh, yeah, he's been on this show once, he way has, way back when, way back when. He walked into a room uh, to look at some artwork that was in there, and somebody else came out from a room across the hallway, like, "Sir, sir." You can't be in there, sir. Oh, shit. Because we were so focused on the goofy-ass horse paintings on the wall that we didn't mm. look at what room we were walking into, and it was a women's bathroom. <laughs> oh, phenomenal job, team. <laughs> wow, wow, wee woo. And, to, an unoccupied unoc- one, fortunately. But, uh, sure. Yeah. But also, two of my groomsmen almost got kicked out of my own wedding yeah, for going into women's you know, bathrooms. Let's put it this way. Two uh, art majors... <laughs> had a combined like twelve beers and went on a little tour. Yep, yep. That and so it'll happen. <laughs> yeah, shit it'll happen. Weird. Um, yeah, no, man, it was good. It was a great. It was a great event. I I owe you all listening for uh, a bunch of thank yous for all of the kind words. People have been tweeting at us and tweeting at me and sending emails and sending gifts and shit. You guys are way too kind. Oh yeah. So. Uh, Hell! Yeah, bro! So thank you very much. It was a phenomenal celebration, and uh, yeah, it feels good. Oh, yeah. I feel good, man. You want to talk about things that don't feel good? <laughs> Not yet, because okay. we have one more thing to talk about with celebrations. We got to wish a happy birthday to longtime listener and many-time caller, Pissed Off Pete from Wisconsin. Oh, sick. It's Pissed Off Pete's birthday, and yeah, yeah, air horn, air horn, air horn, air horn. Holy shit! Hey. Do you still have the meow horn? Where's the meow horn? Oh, you know. Uh, oh, did we get rid of the? Did we dump no, the meow horn? No. Pissed off Pete from Wisconsin has earned himself wait, a meow horn. Wait. Oh God. It's, I don't know where it went. Oh Pete. Oh. Okay, boy. wait. Hit the, hit the air horn again. <laughs> meow 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 meow. 
Good night. Good night. Uh, well. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, that's not it. I don't know where it is. Uh, anyway, Pete, you've been listening and supporting for a really long time. And uh, happy birthday, dude. We appreciate you listening to the show. And all y'all listening. Uh, what's hedging in? What's hedging in? Thanks for being here. All right. We got a wild ass story that... So I've, I've been trying to like get better about planning out episodes ahead of time and uh-huh, whatnot. Uh-huh. And I was looking at the one I had planned for this week and just was not feeling it. Okay. So I started on Saturday. Yeah. Just looking for other stuff. Yeah. And we have talked about this one like in passing a couple of times. And I had it in my notes buried away to be like, come back to this shit at some point. Cause yep. I knew there was more that we hadn't talked about. Yep. I did not realize how fucking deep this Sonic attacks in cuba thing went oh shibbity doodah are we doing the whole episode on this one sonic weapon story yes oh damn i didn't even realize that bro i prepared a whole bunch of other sonic weapon stuff i am prepared to do we we can save things for patreon and whatnot okay this story is fucking giant. All right, and I bro. I had no idea. Then I'm about to li- like literally close the computer and you could take me on a ride because okay, I, st- I straight up like. Save, say, yeah, save those for Thursday. We'll do them for Patreon. All right, let's do it. Because uh, I don't have anything planned for Patreon because I got lost in this shit all week. <laughs> <laughs> Tight. <laughs> so in August of uh, 2017, reports started coming out about quote unquote sonic attacks in Cuba on u.s and canadian diplomats stationed in cuba Uh, sorry give me the month and year again the story started coming out in august of 2017 and if and if my memory serves we were doing a radio show at the time and Uh, that seems about right and the first time we talked about it was in fall of 2017 on the radio that seems about right okay the incidents started in fall uh, winter ish of 2016 but it took almost a full year for it to actually come out in the press. Oh, got it. Okay. So there were 26 American and 14 Canadian diplomatic personnel in Cuba, and they suffered a wide variety of health problems. When you say, sorry, when you say they, is this all 40 of the diplomats had these experiences to varying sorry. degrees? There were more diplomats than that there oh 26 of the american diplomats stationed in cuba and 14 of the canadians stationed in cuba got it had these health issues 40 total diplomats had these experiences i believe that on them that was roughly half of the total for each country that was in cuba at the time okay all right a little less than half i think the americans had 58 total and like 26 of them had these health issues i'm less sure about the canadians so my ears hurt, eh? What was not widely reported and what was not known publicly when this stuff started coming out is that at least three of these American diplomats were actually CIA personnel working under diplomatic cover in Cuba. Oh, spicy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spicy, let's go. So the symptoms that they started experiencing included dizziness, vertigo, pain and ringing in their ears, memory loss, Difficulty sleeping, headaches, and issues with eyesight and hearing. That, okay, so one of the, like, (sighs) read that list one more time. This is, I don't know if this is necessarily a uh, complete list. Right, right. But some of the things that they reported included dizziness, vertigo, uh, so issues with balance as well, Uh, pain and ringing in the ears, memory loss, which seems important, difficulty sleeping, Headaches, issues with eyesight. I guess like, I guess like the, the thing that comes to mind is, isn't there a lot of things that could give you those symptoms? Yes. Okay. What was odd about these symptoms? Yes. Was that there was no obvious cause of them. Mm. There was not a, an incident that, um, spurred this these people were not all like in the same place they did not have a virus or anything that would have been associated with this Mm. um and some of the symptoms lasted for months and there was no like immediate onset there wasn't like we all woke up on monday morning and we were like i feel weird today and they were like i feel weird too for most of the people there was an immediate onset 
but it didn't happen at the same time. Got it. So for each individual person, there was typically an immediate onset. Like, I feel fucked up. But they couldn't link it to an event, and it happened at different times for all of them. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the U.S. government initially thought and accused Cuba of attacking U.S. diplomats. So they thought that the Cuban government or some agency working on behalf of Cuba was carrying out an, a, a specific attack on U.S. diplomats in Cuba. And part of the reason that they originally thought this that was not reported in the first like uh, batch of stories that came out yep. was because the first three people that came down with this were the three CIA agents that were working at, undercover as diplomats. Interesting. So it seemed targeted. Interesting. Yes. Um, after this happened, the U.S. government reduced their staff uh, at their this. So this they were stationed at the U.S. Embassy in Cuba. Right. They originally had a staff of fifty four there, and they brought it down to twelve. So they were pulling people that weren't even affected because. They feared for the safety of people just at the embassy in general after a point. Bro, if you're one of those 12, you're like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah. It's, hey, for for like 50 of you, it's way too dangerous <laughs> to be there. Uh, you guys have to stay. Well, well co- man, I'm going to throw up, man. Canada pulled about... My eyeballs hurt. Canada pulled about half of their staff. Damn. And... The U.S. also removed the vast majority of Cuban diplomats from D.C. Oh, that's sort of in retaliation because they viewed this as a hostile act on behalf or from Cuba against the Americans. And so sort of in retaliation sent most of the Cuban diplomats in D.C. back to Cuba. That's also really interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, later on. So I'm going to give you like a quick summary of the story and then we'll dive into some of the like crazy specifics. Tight. Cause I already have like lots of yeah, questions. Yeah. Uh, there was, there were two medical studies done on these people that were affected comparing their brains to those of, they didn't have uh, they had like a control group of similarly aged, similar demographic, healthy people. Yep. Because they didn't have like before and after MRIs and brain scans and stuff of, of, these, of these specific 40 people. Sure. But comparing them to other people uh, in their age bracket and health level and all that stuff, uh, found that they had experienced some form of brain injury but could not find a cause. So based on MRIs and brain scans and other imaging techniques, they were finding uh, damage consistent with a concussion or traumatic brain injury but without the actual injury. What? Who did these studies? This is the Journal of... uh, Hold on a second. I think it's Journal of American Medicine. It's something like that. I've got... I'm gonna ha- This is one I'm going to have to put like a shitload of links in the show notes and stuff because mm. I'm pulling pretty heavily from uh, a bunch of different sources. Uh, got it. J-M- J-A-M-A. Is that Journal of American... Good Medical Association? Uh, something like that. Yeah, Journal of the American Medical Association. Got it. They did two studies. Um, the first one said, I'm like just from the abstract and summary and stuff, uh, 40 government personnel who were potentially exposed to and experienced neurological symptoms underwent evaluation at a U.S. academic medical center. Wait, sorry. Don't mean to interrupt you, but exposed to? Exposed to what? I don't know. Well, what's read that read that beginning sentence one more time. Forty government personnel who were potentially exposed and experienced neurological symptoms. It doesn't say exposed to what. It just says exposed. That's a wild sentence. <laughs> yes. To just say the word exposed Correct. and be like, oh. Uh, and experienced neurological symptoms underwent evaluation at a U.S. academic medical center from August twenty first to twenty seventeen to June twenty eighteen including advanced structural and functional uh, MRI analytics, magnetic resonance imaging. Findings were compared with imaging findings of 48 demographically similar healthy controls. Uh, Imaging techniques revealed significant 
between group differences in whole brain white matter volume, regional gray and white matter volume, cerebral tissue, blah, 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 blah. Uh, these, these individuals appear to have sustained injury to widespread brain networks without an associated history of trauma. Oh, they had brain damage or brain injuries. Yuck, dude. Consistent with like a TBI or a concussion and no apparent cause. And all of them who had been, well, not all of them, but a significant percentage of people who had been in the same space. I'll link to the studies because I, to be honest, I did not read all of both of these studies. I'm sure the <laughs> Journal of American Because <laughs> a lot of it was over my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's be a, be a little dry. Um, but I, I will link to those if you want to dig deep into how the experiments were set up and stuff. It is in there. Um, okay. Last thing in, in this big summary. In April of last year, 2018, U.S. diplomats in China began reporting similar problems to those reported in Cuba. Oh, Jesus. And at least one was seen by, one, by the same doctor that the Cuban diplomats were seen by, who, in his opinion, saw very similar symptoms and uh, effects, I guess. Bro. Bruh. <laughs> okay. So the attacks themselves. Uh-huh. Well, first, any questions yet? A million, but I don't know. Any if I... that are urgent? I should wait. I'll okay. wait. I'm going to wait. The attacks themselves, uh, or the quote, health problems, typically had a sudden onset, which was slightly different for different people. It wasn't always, they didn't have the exact same experience. Um, but for many, they would begin hearing strange grating noises that they perceived as coming from a specific direction. Grating noises? So the noises are described differently by different people. Some people described it as like a a vibration that yeah. was directional. Some people described it actually as like a a metallic, like if you were rubbing, dragging something across metal or like rubbing two pieces of metal together. Sure. Um, other people described a noise similar to like, uh, like a really loud, uh, like punctuated cricket type noise. Like if, if you had like, like a, a high pitched, if you had like a laser beam of a bunch of crickets pointed at you, that sounds awful. Dude. Yeah, I mean, not the actual creatures, but like their sound. Uh, that if it like, was like funneled at your ear. Sounds like an apocalypse plague yes, gun. Correct. Uh, other people described it being more of a sensation. Like, you know, if you're driving and you like kind of fast and you roll one window down and the uh, air pressure gets all goofy. Dude, you ever get in an Uber and like the Uber driver, like will just crack a window, like his own window. I'm like, bro, like, do you not notice that? Bro, can you not hear that? I'm in well, the back seat feeling like I'm going to barf just off of like 15 seconds of that. The answer may be no, because it's probably not the sound. It's probably the air pressure on your ear that you're feeling. Oh. So depending on where you are in the vehicle, your it might actually be different. different. And then they got the child safety locks on the windows and you're like, man, can you roll my window down, <laughs> please, before my head explodes? So... Some people describe something more like that, not an actual sound. Sure. Um, the attacks ranged in duration anywhere from just 20 seconds up to 30 minutes. And every one of them happened while the diplomats were either in their home or in a hotel room. In their home or in a hotel room. None of them happened in public spaces. None of them happened in the actual embassy. It was either in their homes or in hotel rooms. Interesting. Uh, in all of these cases, no one else nearby. So, like in one of them, uh, one, the, one of the first people, the U.S. CIA agent that was affected, she was in her home with her husband and child. Yep, they didn't experience anything. She did. That's weird. So there does seem to be some like location specific element to it well but you're saying they were in the same location but not in the exact same location they were in other parts of the house oh so it seems oh. to be very locationally specific like she walked for example in in her case 
she was standing in her kitchen in front of her, like in front of the window doing dishes, like the window behind the sink. Yep. Started hearing this sound, feeling weird, moved like to the other side of the kitchen and it stopped. Word. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> Uh, the first one was reported, the first attack was reported on December 30th of 2016, but may have actually occurred earlier. We, we just know that's when the first person like actually sought medical help for what they were experiencing. Sure. So we don't know the exact date that the symptoms started. Um, but he went to the U S embassy health office and I thought this quote was wild. Uh, he said, or this is, um, which article is this from? I'm pulling a lot. There's a, there's an incredible, uh, New Yorker article about this whole situation and a lot of the political implications of it that we'll, we'll oh. get to in a minute. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, that was in the New Yorker written by Adam, uh, and mm, come on. I don't want to subscribe but right now. Hold on. <laughs> Written We're by busy. Adam Entis and John Lee Anderson that was published in November of 18 called The Mystery of the Havana Syndrome, which if you want to Google this, uh, Havana Syndrome is the best way to find information about it. So, you know, you made it as a disease when you got your own name. Yeah. Uh, okay. So since arriving in Havana, he had been subjected to constant surveillance, intrusions into his home and obvious tampering with his belongings. These actions were annoying, but not unexpected. I'm sorry. (laughs) Annoying wouldn't be the word I would use. So apparently the CIA and agents of were aware of, used to expecting some amount of harassment by Cuban government, uh, Cuban intelligence. But isn't just for being there, but didn't wasn't the idea that the CIA agents didn't were not publicly CIA agents as in Cuba was treating them all as Cuban diplomat or I mean as American right, but, diplomats but this to happened Cuba? only so 26 Americans were affected only three of them were CIA agents so whoever was doing this if someone was doing this yeah wasn't specifically targeting CIA agents Oh, so to clarify then, the intrusions and harassment were expected by the entire body of diplomats. Any, yeah, by any American stationed in Cuba on behalf of the U.S. government. They're going to fuck any government representatives. Yes, got it. Uh, I think partially as a, uh, we're going to make it inconvenient for you to be here because some of us don't want you here. Sure. And partially as a, we would like you to be aware that we are aware of what you're doing most of the time. Got it. That you are not doing anything secretively. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That that would be a way to be like, you're not hiding shit. You can't put like a fucking photo card in your suitcase if you come back to your hotel room and your fucking suitcase has been rifled through. Right. Some of the more common uh, ways of doing this, apparently, were going into diplomats' homes, taking a shit and not flushing. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. Are you serious? <laughs> or leaving cigarette butts uh on an ashtray in a in a like easily visible spot. That's so like, just like going to somebody's house while they're at work, smoke a couple cigs, take a shit, and let themselves out. Damn, bro. That's the rudest house guest. Yes. One, also, one of these uh one of the CIA agents <laughs> who experienced this before any of this happened came home from being gone for like a week mm. and her freezer had just been unplugged. Oh, that's such a dick move. So she had a bunch of like rotting food and meat and stuff in her freezer and her whole house stunk and she had to throw it all out. Wow, dude. It's just like, it's just like pranks. Yeah. Like low level harassment, inconveniences, annoyances. And then when they ramped it up, they were shitting in the ashtrays and putting butts (laughs) in the toilet and it started getting real weird. You're not supposed to put butts in the toilet? But on the toilet, not in the toilet. That's what I've been doing wrong. Jiminy Crickets! <laughs> That's when you know it's a mistake. If your butt's wet, you're in the toilet, not on the toilet. I thought it was like a built-in bidet situation. Oh. Anyway. A- <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the first one was reported to the U.S. Uh, health office, embassy health office, in end of December 2016. 
Uh, second one came the, the second week of January. Two more in February. And they were all describing similar symptoms. They had all started feeling these symptoms suddenly and while at home. So Got that it. was sort of the original link to this might be some sort of attack. Right. right. We know that... Uh, Cuban government is keeping track of where our diplomats are, where they live. We know that they're harassing them in their homes. This seems like maybe uh, an extension of that, but one that we're totally not okay with. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> look, you can shit on my toilet. Shit on my toilet, shame on me. Give me a brain injury from afar, shame on, <laughs> shame on all of us. So, the Americans went to the Cuban government and said like, hey, uh, we're assuming that this is you doing something and we're not cool with it. And the Cubans said, we don't know what you're talking about. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> we'll stop damaging your brain. So I want to go through uh, some... This New Yorker article is fascinating and takes probably like an hour and a half to read. Damn, son. It is the, there's an audio version of it, which is great, by the way. Shout out to the New Yorker for doing that. God bless. It's going to take over, man. I've, I've thought that whoever can, well, I'll keep my business ideas to myself, <laughs> but it's a great idea. There's about a 70-minute audio version of this article if you want to listen to it in podcast form. How do you listen to it in podcast form? I'll, it's, uh, there's a link. Well, they have the audio embedded in the actual article. Oh. I'm assuming you can download it. I don't know if the New Yorker has a podcast. They should. And just put their best articles in the podcast. Yeah, yeah that'd be... But I'll, I'll link to both the text and the audio in the show notes. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through the next part of this in the way that the New Yorker article goes through it. Yep. Uh, starting with a quote from Benjamin Rhodes, a national security advisor to Barack Obama. Quote, the Russians would have had every interest in fucking with us in Cuba. Uh oh. <laughs> so the prevailing theory at the time, and I think still now, maybe it's changed with the the Chinese developments, but the the theory within the U.S. government and intelligence agencies seems to be that Russia, either unbeknownst to Cuba or in concert with Cuba, was fucking with American diplomats in Cuba. I feel dumb, well, often on this show, but like politics is something that I'm more versed in than math. <laughs> and I feel really dumb that because one of the questions I'm writing down my questions as we go. Sure. But one of the questions that I had was like, yes, Cuba and the US have had contentious relationships over the course of the last. 50 years mm -hmm. 60 years but i was like it just seems really fucking aggressive for a country like cuba to do to our diplomats like it's like i know the relationship is contentious but it's not like that or in my to, head i mean yeah. obviously i don't fucking know but i'm going like it doesn't seem like it would escalate to the point of being like fuck you well from the Cubans, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Right. But uh, this makes so much more sense that Russia and Cuba are really well tied and that they would be, A, Russians would be in the country easily, and B... That is definitely the case. Yeah, and and would be able to, if not, like you said, in concert with the Cubans, learn where these people are, like pretty easily figure it out themselves and probably be able to operate relatively freely inside of the country as well. So I, I think part of the logic for arriving at that conclusion uh, is that it probably was not done with Cuba's knowledge. Right. That Russia's goal often seems just to be, to create chaos. Disruptive. Yeah. And for just sure. to be as disruptive as possible, especially to the United States. Yep. Um, but to global politics as well. Uh, so they, they would have have, would have had like, this fits their mold of like, let's just fuck shit up, especially if it, if it involves the U S right. They would have had the technology to do so. 
whereas Cuba, as far as we know, probably does not. Russia, so, going back to when it was Soviet Union, has spent a lot of time and money and intelligent people's brains yeah, developing yeah. sonic weaponry. Like, this is a thing we know they have been interested in. That was another question I had was like, so, well, I don't know. I don't, is it, can I just ask questions intermittently? Mm-hmm. Should I wait? Here's one more thing about the, the Russia Cuba thing. Cuba was an ally of the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Right. To the point where, like, the whole Cuban missile crisis was right. Russia had a bunch of nukes on Cuba pointed at Florida. Right. And Cuba was like, yeah, yeah, I don't see a problem. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. This, this makes us slightly more safe. Like, go for it. Not our country, not our problem. That's what I say. The last thing, uh, the timing of all this is super interesting because it was, this all kicked off after Trump had been elected, but before Obama had left office. Interesting. And Obama had done a lot to improve relations between the U.S. and Cuba, had opened a lot of things up. Trump shut that door. Yeah. Was in a stupid and aggressive way on Twitter. Was going to be usual. was going to be one of our potential honeymoon destinations from a long time ago because they had opened up the possibility of travel. Yeah. Under so, certain circumstances. The timing is very interesting as well. This all kicked off November slash December of 2016. Interesting. Okay. Questions. Um, well, when are when are we going to get into like what is this? Uh we can at any time. Okay. Uh one last thing about the the politics. Castro had died about 2 weeks prior also. Oh, interesting. For whatever that's worth, which I don't know. Interesting. But the timing of all of it is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It it would seem speaking of taking advantage of chaos that Castro's death would have probably created a, a distracted focus. People are focusing on, I'm sure there was some sort of power struggle there or, you know, who's falling into the next. I think Raul Castro, had, his brother, had already been president at that point. I, I don't mean like political power struggle. I mean more like, like I'm sure he was still calling some shots and sure. like who's, yeah, yeah. who gets to call shots now and like, yeah. like if something happened that Fidel didn't like, he would have probably been like, hey, cut it the fuck out. <laughs> Whereas once he's not there to tell people to cut it the fuck out, anything's right. possible. Right. Um, yeah. The going back to your point about Russian technology and having the money and the investment in it, that was another question I had, which was like, it seems illogical to me that, and I know there's the, there's the China story of the Chinese diplomats having that. And we can get to that in a second too, but without it being something that we've seen happen in other countries it's a, it's strange to me to go like cuba of all the militaries in the world cuba is the one that has access right. to this like high tech something or other that's like disrupting people's brains right. that that seems highly like highly uh i guess unlikely yeah so some theories from this uh new yorker article that is written by people smarter and much more well-researched than either of us Hell probably yeah. will ever be about anything. God bless. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for helping us, guys. <laughs> One leading theory was that Cuban hardliners who were loyal to Fidel Castro decided to act covertly against the CIA. They may have acted alone, or they could have conspired with a foreign adversary which supplied them with the technological means. Interesting. So... Maybe a slight variation on what we were just talking about. Right, right. It's a combo platter of like the technology came from Russia. Russia saw an opportunity to jump in without getting their hands dirty and fuck with the U.S. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, no, no, Cuba did it. I don't know where they got that shit. Hey, hey uh, if we wanted to fuck with America, <laughs> y'all got anything? Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh oops. Here's the, a pile of weapons you can use. Here's an LRAD that <laughs> fell off a truck. Have fun. Um, another theory was that the Cubans, alarmed by the influx and pe- of people and communications, were de- deploying a new type of spy gear, which inadvertently caused harm. That's interesting. And the th- one of the spy theories, gear? so that's a 
That's a relatively general phrase. Yeah, uh, a little bit of clarification on that, or an example of what that might be. Some Inspector Gadget shit. Uh, A group from the University of Michigan, a security and privacy research group, which sounds fascinating. They did a study basically to try and figure out um, if overlapping or conflicting ultrasound frequencies could have produced inadvertently like a third audible frequency. So ultrasound is frequencies above the range of what we can hear. Sure. Right. So we we can hear from 20, roughly 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. Yeah. Ultrasound is anything above 20,000. Infrasound is anything below 20. So ultrasound uses like really, really high frequency sound. Right. Right. So what they're saying is that if you were to have two really high frequency sounds overlap, they could resonate in such a way that it would a create this audible sound that people were hearing Hmm. and B maybe have some sort of adverse health effect. And so they proved the first half, they were able to overlay two ultrasound frequencies to produce an audible sound at seven kilohertz, which is what people were hearing. Because somebody recorded it on their phone, and there is a recording of it that we could listen to if you want. Fuck yeah, dude. How have we not done that yet? Well, that sounds awesome. It freaks me out a little bit. It freaks me out too, but let's do it. I'm assuming we're safe. Um, we're, bro, we're listening to it through fucking headphones for like... Well... <laughs> for like <laughs> seconds. Go straight to your... Um, yeah, so the, the logic is that it would have been either the infrasound or ultrasound that would have been harmful... Got it. Because as far as we know, things in the audible range can't be harmful, right? Um, Well. I mean, unless at like extreme volumes. Right. Yeah. And my computer and your speakers can't make things below 20 hertz or above 20,000 hertz. Right. And your iPhone can't record things outside of that range, so we should be fine. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. Doctors have said as much. The AP published it. it. I mean, we can't be at fault here, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, All right. If you guys don't want to hear <laughs> the brown note. That's that's a real thing, by the way. It's uh, not a real thing. Uh, I did some I did some research on it for this episode. Thing. We'll talk it's about it on the page. Real thing. We'll talk about it on the Patreon. Let me, uh, fuck. Let me see. The, the fucking AP writes this whole article saying that they have... The sound. The sound, and then it's not anywhere in the article. Dicks. Uh, I, I have another link. I just need to find it. Guys, uh, while Spencer finds that, when I say we'll talk about it on the Patreon, uh, we do two episodes of the show every week. <laughs> we do a free episode, which you're listening to right now. We do a paid episode. It's only five bucks a month to get an extra episode every single week, plus access to a back catalog of 100 episodes of the show. Uh, go to patreon.com slash whatifpodcast. For just five bucks a month, you get all that fucking content for your earballs, right. and it won't hurt you. <laughs> the, hurt them like this will. Yeah, I'm gonna play this one quietly at first because okay. it's sort of harsh. Let's see. Come on, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. I understand the cricket thing, right? So that that's um. They they put a a graph of that a sucks frequent, balls. I hate that. It's not a nice sound. They they put a, a frequency response chart of this sound up uh, on this video too. That I'll link to Time Time Magazine of all places actually published a YouTube video with just the sound. Um, it's almost all at seven thousand hertz. Okay, but again, that could be the fact that it was recorded on an iPhone, which wouldn't get stuff at you know. 21 hertz 21,000 hertz or 28 or right anything below i don't even know what the response on that microphone is but i'm assuming it's not super sensitive to low frequencies either sure um but yeah that's what some people reported hearing huh but anyway so by overlapping two ultrasound frequencies this group at the university of michigan was able to produce like that sound got it so but we don't know how it would have like given people brain injuries still it doesn't answer that part and then and the insinuation of the spy gear 
thing is that there would have to have been two simultaneous ultrasonic. So some surveillance things? equipment uses ultrasound. Got it. So if so they were saying, surveilling from two different angles, the ultrasound that was being used to surveil diplomats' homes overlapped, created a sound, and fucked up their brains. That is that theory, yes. And for what it's worth, that would explain to a degree Cuba, if it was Cuba, doing what they thought was harmless spying on U.S. diplomats, which like we know spying happens all the time, especially when you have contentious relationships. They knew that was happening. Yeah. They, they're maybe like, we don't know what you're talking about. Like we didn't fucking damage anybody's brains. We weren't fucking like, we weren't doing anything crazy. Right. Cause they genuinely didn't, they didn't know that think they were, they were yeah. but if you were listening from two angles using ultrasonic, you know, technology, right. you could have been disrupting in a way you didn't expect. As far as I know, ultrasound doesn't give you a brain injury though. But, I mean, we give them to fucking babies. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's hope not. I guess. <laughs> but but if you were getting two ultrasounds from two different directions, is that yeah? Who knows? Potentially problematic. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, Raúl Castro, who was president at the time, suggested a third country might be responsible. And <laughs> nice. Well, right. S- S- uh, I don't know. Some not us. <laughs> not us did it. It wasn't me. <laughs> Had me bleeding out my ears. It wasn't me. Um, another U.S. Uh, official said, quote, who else has secret weapons programs? Who else has the ability to conduct an operation like this? It fits their pattern and their style, referring to Russia. Okay, I was going to say referring to Cuba or Russia. Yeah, yeah, referring yeah. Referring to Russia. Um, Man, they just, they don't give a fuck, do they? Russia? Yeah. No. Just mm-hmm. like... Not even a little bit. Also, though, China? Well. Not quite as aggressive, typically. Not quite as, like, intentionally disruptive, usually. But certainly technologically capable. But also. Certainly not giving a fuck most of the time. But also, doesn't Russia also benefit from destabilized relations between China and the United States? I would assume so. So could it not have been the exact same situation in another country? Russia going and doing the same thing in China? Right. Yeah. Yes. It's definitely possible. That that to me sounds... Seems like it'd be a, a little harder to do in a in a non-friendly country, but... Uh, are China and Russia unfriendly? I don't know. I don't think they're unfriendly. Okay. <laughs> and I think for that reason specific, because like China benefits, China and the United States benefit from our mutually beneficial relationship where like the two primary trading economies in the world yeah it for sure benefits russia to fuck with that it makes far less sense to me <clears throat> excuse me it makes far less sense to me that china yes china would have the financial resources and the military resources and the technological resources to make something like that happen in a completely different you know place but to me it seems significantly more likely that that would be russia again just being like haha we fucked up your people and yeah. you know whatever uh, a couple more things from this New Yorker article that I didn't see reported elsewhere and found fascinating. In late April, an American government doctor arrived in Havana specifically to work with these people that were being affected and checked into the Capri Hotel. Sorry, I just laughed at the thought of them being like, yeah, cool, send your doctor. We'll give it to him too. <laughs> like just immediately fuck up the person who's investigating the thing that's well, fucked up. Well, they basically didn't trust any Cuban doctors. So for a while, they uh, they first sent people to Miami, then sent people to a doctor who worked specifically with like this type of neurological issue in Pennsylvania. Damn. And then eventually flew a doctor down to Havana to work with them. Bro, that's so intense. Yeah, because I mean, that, that's where like the political stuff gets really fascinating is like this whole relationship between the U S and Cuba right. is super tenuous and totally. changes all the time. Totally. And no one trusts anyone on either side. Sure. And there are a bunch of other countries involved tangentially as well. Right. Get super messy. Yeah. If, if, you, if I was in, if I was a diplomat in Cuba and somebody was like, Oh, we're just going to like give you an x-ray and like, give you a couple like shots i'd be like yeah i don't know about that yeah (laughs) i might be good on that there's a whole section in this article about like the u.s just needed furniture for their embassy 
Oh, sure. And it was this huge ordeal because they couldn't source it from anywhere in Cuba without risking some of it being bugged. Oh, that's crazy. And Cuba wouldn't let them ship import it. Ship anything in without inspecting it first. Totally. Which then opens it up to being bugged. Right. And in the past, when the U.S. has said they're shipping stuff in and had it exempt from inspection, they've included a bunch of other shit in it that they didn't say they were bringing into the country. Of course we did. So Cuba doesn't (laughs) trust the U.S. either for good reason. Right, right. And so they ended up like it was this huge negotiation <laughs> to get one shipping container of office furniture into the country. Damn, that's so wild. That they, I don't know where it originated from, but fucking IKEA. Yeah, Sweden. <laughs> so anyway, this doctor comes down to Cuba, and um, he's not. He worked at the CIA's Office of Medical Services. Whoa! So his job is to go around the world working on CIA employees interesting Mm -hmm. Um, bro that what a fucking job dude yeah (laughs) so you gotta meet dudes in like fucking hotel rooms in prague and probably fucking like sew their bodies up he's meeting a guy in a hotel room in havana i'm saying dude to figure out his traumatic brain injury from a sonic weapon fuck dude (laughs) bro let me read that motherfucker's book dude give me that 350 pages and i will read it cover to cover so The quote from the article, these doctors aren't spies, but they often travel under assumed names because they meet with CIA officers in the field. Damn, Uh dude. So he gets to the Capri. Like, of course this is real, but like, I love hearing it being said. Uh Like, yeah, of course this guy's real. A receptionist directed the doctor to a room. Um, While the doctor was in the room, he heard and felt something strange and was stricken with symptoms similar to the previous victims. Oh, no, I was joking, (laughs) dude. Oh, no. (laughs) Before then, the incidents had all taken place at CIA officers' homes whose locations were presumed to be known to Cuban intelligence. The doctor had arrived unannounced, but the perpetrator seemed to be aware of when he was coming and precisely where he was staying. Woof. As soon as he got to his room in the hotel, he got got. Woof. During the summer, another incident increased the pressure to withdraw, uh, meaning diplomats from Cuba. In mid-August, the CIA officer flew to Havana and checked into the Hotel Nacional 200 yards from the Capri, where the agency doctor had been sickened four months before. The officer was given a room on the eighth floor, and like the doctor who stayed at the Capri, she was in her room when she was afflicted, afflicted. Whoa, dude. So they sent two doctors down there, four months apart, at two different hotels, and both of them ended up having the same symptoms. Like on day one. Yeah. At least it doesn't say the time for this, the second story, but for the first doctor, it was like within hours of being there. Wow, dude. It's like so calculated. But we don't know what it is. That's the craziest part. Well, right. There's no consensus at all around what is actually happening. Are we... Raul Castro also uh, suggested that China was responsible at one point. But it seems like he was pointing at everyone but Cuba. (laughs) Right. (laughs) They did it. Yeah. Um, Okay, the last part. The following March, so that's March of 18 now, Catherine Werner, a Commerce Department employee at the U.S. Consulate in Gangzhou, China, reported being stricken one night by an eerie pulsation that created pressure in her head. In April, she was flown to the University of Pennsylvania, where they did the original set of tests, uh, and doctors there confirmed that her symptoms were similar to those that the victims in Cuba had described. Interesting. But that she is the one and only case of that happening in China. The State, the State Department asked medical officers in China to evaluate about 300 employees, and 15 were identified as possible cases and sent to the University of Pennsylvania for examination. Interesting. But I don't know the results of those exams. But that's so one a, for sure, 15 more potential ones, and then I don't know what came of that. Even if all 15 were yeses, though, that would be a significantly smaller percentage than what happened in Cuba, because Cuba was like 50% of our diplomats. That well, would be, yeah, we had 54 there. Yeah, exactly half, yeah. And that would be like less than... This was 15 out of 30, so less five, than 10%. 5%. Yeah, 5%. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Or 
Yeah, if it was 16, whatever that is, 5.5%. Yeah. So what is it? <laughs> All right. Um, I have a list of everything that's been put forth as a possible explanation so far. Lit! Let's go. The first is mass hysteria. Uh, I know. The Guardian, uh, there's a Guardian article that suggested this. Neurologists argue that the possibility of, quote, functional disorder due to a problem in the functioning of the nervous system rather than a disease should be considered. This is coming from uh, Mark Hallett, who is the head of the Human Motor Control Section of the U.S. National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. He said, quote, from an objective point of view, it's more likely mass hysteria than anything else. Okay, bro, we'll be we'll be the ones who decide what objective is here. (laughs) I think he's just saying mass hysteria is a thing we know is possible. And you guys are suggesting things that, as far as we know, aren't really possible. Well, or we don't know how it would operate if it is possible. We don't have other examples of sounds being beamed into people's heads, creating brain injuries. Yeah, but we also don't have a mechanism for research and testing of a thing like that yeah, exactly. where we would be able to do that. It's a thing that science does all the time. It's it like where because it hasn't happened yet or it hasn't been documented in the way that we need it to be documented, therefore it's impossible. Right? Yeah. Like, those are not the same. That's trash. Those are not equal. No. But science and medicine does it all the time. It's impossible right. until it happens. Right. And we document it the way that we need it to be documented. Right. They're not going to write Journal of American Medicine Association does tests where they fire a sound cannon into because a you child's can't. Yeah, head. Yeah, exactly. You can't study something yeah, like this. Right. right. It's, it's illegal. It's, inter- it's probably against international law to do any sort of anything approximating this. Big time. So big time. One one point that is probably worth considering is that this type of thing does happen to groups of people in high stress situations that have a lot of interaction with each other and don't have a lot of interaction outside of that group. Sure. But other, would, but other than that, I don't see a whole lot of anything here. I would allow I would allow for this to be in the conversation for longer than one second, if if there had not been MRIs done of these people's right. brains right. displaying traumatic brain injury symptoms and having symptoms of their traumatic brain injuries that are similar to traumatic brain injuries without any physical cause without any physical cause. If, if, if you had just told me these people were exhibiting these symptoms or claiming they were feeling the same way, I'd be like, that's interesting. But if you can actually diagnose it and you can take brain scans that prove that there is something going on in their gray. I mean that fucking list of, I know you kind of blah, blah, blah through it. Cause it was getting like too technical at a certain point, but all the different types of brain tissue that were affected and notably affected, like, you don't. It's not yeah. nothing. It's not nothing. Yeah. It's there, not. There's a physical component to this. Hey, that, Dave, do you feel weird? Yeah, dude, I do feel weird. Oh, I feel weird. I feel weirder now that we both feel weird. Now like, that I no. feel weird, I'm going to rearrange my brain cells. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, Kelly, do you feel weird? I, you know, now that you say it, I do feel weird. Like, that's <laughs> that's fucking goofballs. All right. Um, all right. We'll toss that one out then. Neurotoxins from mosquito fumigation. Okay. So. I, in my questions list, yes, wrote, could this have been a drug of some kind? Uh, possibly. Because that to me, so, sorry, I'm going to go off on a tangent quick. This is also related to a question I have, which is, you were talking about, like, people making comments about it being location specific, about yeah. how, like, the one woman was standing at her kitchen sink when she felt this, like, sensation. Yep. And I was like, how, you know, like we'll talk about, we'll talk about on the Patreon episode, but like an LRAD is like a super targeted specific audio beam, basically. Yeah. They don't like calling them weapons because they're used for a variety of purposes, but they're also used as weapons. Mm -hmm. Even if that's what you were doing, like it would be pretty hard to target an individual in a home to know where they are physically in the house from outside of the house. Well, it makes not, more sense. A, not if paired with other surveillance techniques. That's a good point. If I know where you are in the house, which via, they admitted like 
that was happening. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, no, that's a good point. I guess there's that. I guess it's just like, especially too, as it relates to the, you're instantly like overtaken by these symptoms when you walk into a hotel room. Like, do yeah. we are, are we are we beaming sound from a Elrad truck in the parking lot somewhere? In the case of, uh, did we bring it into a hotel room? Is it literally like through the wall and they're beaming this fucking fucked up sound through your hotel room wall? In the case of a airborne drug, though, it would be even harder to direct that to a specific person as opposed to other people in that same hotel room or in that same home. Yeah. What if the kid's in the kitchen instead? That's true. I guess I would posit that, like, they maybe didn't necessarily, like, put a neurotoxin in the house as much as maybe they, like, put it somewhere they knew these people were going to be or a place they knew they were going to be transported through or or a transportation vehicle they knew they were going to be taking, or I, I yeah. don't know. So this this BBC reporting uh, about the neurotoxins from the mosquito fumigation uh, suggests that the, the brain injuries um, raise, quote, raise the hypothesis of recurrent low-dose exposure to neurotoxins. Mm. Specifically, the re- results were highly suggestive of something called, hmm. Do it. Co- you got it. Kali. Mm, Cryptochronicunolite. Cholinesterase inhibitor intoxication. Um, the, the, uh, the doses delivered are consistent with exposure to commercial pesticides. Huh. Fumigation in Cuba increased after the country, quote, declared war on the Zika virus in 2016. Zam. Spraying gas around or sometimes inside diplomats' homes. So, okay, so interesting take. I like it. This is slightly more of like the accidental side than what I was suggesting, which was would be more of like a purposeful poisoning of these people to fuck with them. Yeah. But the, like the... I think pretty obvious counter to this one is, well, if they were spraying the whole fucking city with Zika neurotoxin, it would have gotten a lot more than 40 people. This would have been widespread reported amongst the people of Cuba. Right. As well as probably most diplomats. Yes. Also the family families that are living in the same homes. Like, like I like the idea of a more targeted drug, but it being like a, this was a thing that was around and happening. That doesn't seem plausible to me. The odds of this being an accidental thing get smaller and smaller. The more I read about it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is maybe yeah. confirmation bias, but whatever. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. That one seems some version of that seems plausible to me. Uh, next one is crickets. I can't, I don't, can't even. Okay. Did they, did they really, <laughs> did they really say that? <laughs> This is a, uh, I pulled this from a CNN article, but the headline crickets could be behind the the Cuba sonic attack mystery, scientists say. Basically, this comes down to someone analyzed the sound and it is very similar to the, the recorded sound. It is very similar to a specific type of cricket that lives in Cuba. There's a... We did a Patreon episode on this, and I and I think I was the one that rebooted the story, and I and I brought up the cricket thing for you, and you were like, "It's probably fucking crickets. This is ridiculous." Like, crickets don't sound- give people brain injuries, though. Exactly, you're That's- missing the biggest part of this. Is like, obviously, yes, people hear crickets. Some of the people though who had this injury didn't even report hearing anything. That's maybe the most fucked up. Part. Or some of them reported hearing a or feeling a pressure inside their head suddenly. Ugh. The sound of a cricket does not make the pressure inside your skull suddenly increase. No. It doesn't explain that also, 90% of it. It explains right. that one person heard a sound. That also, to me, leads me more down the road of like a toxin of some kind. If hella people are not reporting like hearing anything. But it part of what makes this so confusing is that people described such a wide variety of Right. experiences right. and symptoms right like for some people the symptoms went away in a few days other people missed months of work because of it some and, people had a headache other people like 
had trouble standing. And I, that's so interesting. And I think like, for me, that goes, well, I mean, it's dosage of anything, right? Like not, not just, point. Yeah. Not just dosage of like a toxin, but like dosage of length like, of exposure to something. Right. Yeah. Like, let's say there is an LRAD on a truck that they're covertly driving in a, in a fucking white van that they're driving down blocks and like blasting into locations. It's, you know, positional, like pivotal inside of a truck or a caravan or whatever. Yeah. You know, maybe they sat outside a X person's house for five minutes before they got spooked and were like, we got to go. But maybe with this person's house, they sat across the street and were like, we'll sit here for three hours tonight and fuck their shit up while they're sleeping and then drive away. Or somebody who felt funny moved right away and somebody else stood there for a few minutes trying to figure out why they felt funny. Right. And they're catching a fat, nasty beam of like subsonic. One, One thing too is like, the size and shape of your skull, if it is a sound related thing, is going to affect how that resonates inside of your head. I was going to say something similar that like a small bodied person versus a large bodied person. Like, I don't, I don't know. Or even who just would... the shape of your sinuses and stuff and your, sure. Your head cavities. <laughs> yeah. That resonance, you're going to yeah. like, you're going to feel it differently. Um, the last one, we talked about ultrasound um, in terms of the accidental overlapping of ultrasound frequencies. Yeah. The last one is just like some other sort of sonic weapon that we don't know about yet, hmm. which is sort of interesting in that China just announced that they have one within oh. the last two weeks. Cool. Mm-hmm. How'd they do that? Which seems interestingly timed with the Hong Kong protests also. Oh. Um, and also, I don't know if we can ever exactly trust any reporting coming exclusively from China. Yeah. But uh, there's an article from MSN was the only place I could find like in the U.S. really reporting this. But China developed the world's first portable sonic gun for riot control, Mm. says the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Mm. Uh, Jointly developed with the military and law enforcement, it's designed to disperse crowds using focused waves of low frequency sound. The effect would cause extreme discomfort with vibrations in the eardrums, eyeballs, stomach, liver, and brain, scientists said. It's going to shake your brain. It's the brown note, bro. It's going to shake your bowels. It's going to shake your butt out. Shit your brain out. Yeah, I mean. (laughs) Just straight down. I think that to me, because like, we'll talk about this on the Patreon, but like the LRAD stuff is really interesting. Mostly though, those types of audio tools are, are high DB. Like right. that's that's what it is. Is it's a super super focused beam of high dB. Some of them to sounds. the point where like it would kill you before it would do other like in more inconvenient damage to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, but but also I I would be curious to know how many of those types of things could be used. Like the company Elrad makes a device it's the one that you've seen i'm spoiling a little bit of what we'll talk about later but like it's it's that device you see it looks like they're either circular like pancake or they're square like waffle and they are on that like pivot it's like a big satellite dish kind of thing kind of but they're usually flat and um for like their base level model which is like mad expensive they're like a this the lrad company is like publicly traded they must sell a fuckload of these things god this country is just the worst sometimes (laughs) yeah man i mean they put can we make money off of killing people with sound (laughs) they put out a lot of other uses for these as like primary uses for these but when you see them in the news they're being used for one specific thing which is to like blast protesters out of an alley with like crazy sounds just like how there are lots of uses for Assault rifles. Yeah. But the <laughs> but the um the fucking audio source for these LRADs is a conventional fucking MP3 player. Like you can literally upload anything to it and it will play it at massive volumes in specifically targeted like conical <laughs> shapes of like thirty degrees for extremely long distances. Wow. Why have no rappers done this yet? Is that how you get your mixtape out there now? <laughs> you can pull up to the show with the LRAD on a truck. And just spin that motherfucker in circles. Yeah. 
We're doing that for next year's uh, Contact in the Desert. Fire. Just driving out to like, I don't know, a couple hundred miles away from the venue. And just doing the podcast from there. Yep. <laughs> you going to listen to this now. We'll literally kill people with our bullshit. <laughs> hey, you thought you showed up for that, but you showed up for this. Just from a thousand miles away. Dude, that would be pretty fire. One of the 7,000 tabs I have open is playing audio, and I don't know which oh, one it is. Oh, God, we got to uh, mute it. Um, um, okay, w- two more f- fascinating parts of this story. Oh, well, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I got to say one thing. Oh, sure. With that long-distance LRAD thing, what I was trying to get at was, is it possible that they could have created a low-frequency sound and pumped it through a long-distance focused device, as in, like, we have the technology, but no one's used this type of sound with that type of technology mm. to accomplish the like quote unquote desired outcome. So it's like, oh yeah, like that's crazy. What could possibly do that? And it's like, well, they got a fucking three million dollar sound broadcaster, stuck it in a van, and had somebody work out a super fucked up low frequency weird thing to pump through it. And we found out this is what it accomplishes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it yeah. might not be like a fully new crazy weapon that someone put a bunch of money in. It might just be like, well, we know how to, you're saying the Chinese one or that the- one or whatever was happening in Cuba could have been a combination of the two. It could the- have been new Chinese technology, but it also could have been, yo, know, we've got like the technology is out there. Yeah. They're just using it in a way that hasn't been used. Let's be, let's be extra reckless with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's really yeah. fuck it up. Um, Last thing on this story, and then one other thing that I just found fascinating along the way. Canadian diplomats are suing the Canadian government over this. To the tune of 21 million American dollars or 28 million Canadian dollars. I'm not sure that's the right person to sue. Well, their argument is that this is uh, in the... The court in the court filing throughout the crisis, Canada downplayed the seriousness of the situation, hoarded and concealed critical health and safety information and gave false, misleading and incomplete information to diplomatic staff. Damn. So they're saying that their government knew more about what was going on, did not share it with them and kept them there when they should not have been there. Damn. That's wild. To the negative effect of their health. That's wild. That's the, very the, wild. These diplomats are unnamed in the court filing, so we, I don't know who they are or how many of them are suing out of the 14, 14 that were supposedly affected. I, uh, how, hmm. <laughs> Seven of them for three mil each, maybe? Yeah. How, one, one and a half each. How do you, um, I'm pausing around like, how do you, how do you know? How do you know they knew? How they do you, mu- yeah, they must have some evidence of that. I mean, is it like we reported it and they were like, it's fine? Or, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Or some, yeah, communication or documents came right. out later or right. they were able to, yeah, I don't know. Huh. There's very little information about it because the filing is not uh, public, I don't believe. But Interesting. Uh, lastly, this is only sort of related, but I, I discovered something called the fry effect. Are you familiar with this at all? I'm not. F R Y F R Y E F R E Y F R E Y as in uh the guy fried your brain. Well, no. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> it. Named though. after Alan Fry. It's also called the microwave aud- auditory effect. That sounds A like it's going on the list and B <laughs> fucked up. So let me just uh read the the Wikipedia summary for you quickly. The Fry effect consists of the human perception of audible, audible clicks or even speech induced by pulsed or modulated radio frequencies. Whoa. So, oh, sorry. The communications are generated directly inside the human head without the need of any receiving electronic device. You can shoot microwaves at somebody's skull in a way that will make them hear sounds, including speech. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck that. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> Fuck everything. Uh, That's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Hell no. Hell no, bro. I think we should leave it there for the week. Oh, good luck, guys. 
Hey, everybody, good luck just out gave, there. Gave you about 30,000 things to Google for the week. Uh, I'll just drop a whole shitload of links in this week's episode. If you want to explore more of all these things, there's oh, lots more to explore. And we'll explore more of it on this week's paid episode, patreon.com slash what a podcast. Hoy vey. <laughs> It's good to be back, buddy. Good to be back. Good to be scared. (laughs) Good to be with you. Uh, Hey, we love you guys very much. Thank you guys for listening to the show. Uh, If you want to call and leave us a voicemail, it's 612-246-4614. Emails are hi at whatifpodcast.com. Go to whatifpodcast.com slash LA. We're going to be in LA, and we want to see your shining faces. Go get your tickets. Uh, you can buy swag at shop.whatifpodcast.com. We got new hats. We're going to have a bunch of free exclusive merch at that LA show That's true. that we're, we're just going to give away out. to people yep. who show up. That's how you know you got to go. We're going to get some free swag for you. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. It's going to be a good time. Um, right. Love you. Love you. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.